The first episode can be incredibly important for a show, even today, as it still serves as a first impression for most fans who discover the show on their own. Even in today's age with DVR and the internet, most people are just going to watch the first episode first, unless a fan recommends them a different episode to watch first instead. The first and second episode of this show also aired on the same day, so the people watching TV got to see both of these episodes in the same day, most likely in the same 30 minute time slot. I wouldn't really know, I didn't get to watch it when it aired, but this also makes them sort of a dual um, season premiere, which can actually give people the impression that the episodes could end up being paired off before the third episode ends up airing later. I'm going to talk about how these two episodes pair together a little bit, as that's the first thing that someone might think, especially if they're familiar with the old show. But enough about the format. I did enough rambling on that in the introduction. Let's take a look at what kind of first impression Escape from Monster Island gives us. We open on the girls talking about their favorite band, Sensitive Thugs. Yeah, it makes sense for the girls to be into a boy band like this. Although notably... Even though it's just a parody of boy bands, you know, type of concept we've seen a million times before, especially in the 90s, the visuals involving the way the members specifically look appears to be somewhat more directly in parody of One Direction. Especially when you consider the two members that get highlighted, Chance and Dax, who look, you know, oddly similar to Harry Styles and Zayn Malik, the two most well-known members. Okay, former member in Zayn's case, but it's pretty clear what they're trying to poke fun at. This scene also does a little bit to establish the personalities of the girls. Bubbles doesn't get too much of an introduction here, but I get the impression that Bubbles is the girliest of the girls, if that makes any sense. She doesn't really go into detail about what she likes. She just says that it's good. This, in a way, paints Bubbles as the stupid one, which kind of does work for this episode. But we also see later in the episode that this is actually kind of setting up for Bubbles having this sort of ditzy stereotype. Buttercup specifically likes the bad boy of the group, indicating her tough persona and the tone of the statement also serves to show Buttercup's more casual demeanor that we'll see in later episodes. Blossom, on the other hand, likes the manager the most, indicating her need for order and organization. This is actually a pretty decent sequence, although I think hearing a little bit more from Bubbles would have made it a better introduction. The song ends after this statement and the girls squee when they hear the name of the song. For some reason. Eh, they're little girls, they'll probably squee at anything. Then we get into some actual plot. The radio is giving away tickets to the show Sensitive Thugs are putting on. This is a pretty typical plot, but I do have something to talk about in this particular sequence. The girls move so fast towards the radio that it really gives you a good indication how much they want to win those tickets. Since the question is about chance, naturally Bubbles is the one to answer the question, which is why she was in front of the chance poster earlier to establish her favorite band member in a non-verbal fashion. That, what, hologram dream thing? This is kind of weird, though. Of course, we kind of already knew where this was going. There's two tickets, but Bubbles has two sisters. So, decision has to be made. Pretty much the same setup that's been done a million times before, but you know what they say about something that's not broken. It serves as a way to create conflict within the group, which is going to make later scenes a bit more interesting. Bubbles is stopped from giving an answer by the phone ringing. Wait, is that... Bubbles' cell phone? How to get on the charger if she was just holding it? Wasn't there a red phone on that charger a second ago? For that matter, wouldn't that have been Blossom's phone? Why is there only one charging station when there's three phones? Okay, maybe this is a stupid question. After all, it's just a cartoon. But it's kind of worth pointing out when the animation and what little storytelling we've had has been so consistent up until now. Anyway, the mayor's in trouble! Plane crash! Everything's gone to shit! So the girls now have to save the day with the tension of Bubbles' future decision in the air. The mayor was apparently near Monster Island, so that's where they're going. Presumably to escape from later, since, you know, that's the name of the episode. Worth noting here is that when Buttercup says, that's a dangerous place, does that delivery sound forced to anybody else? It's kind of worth pointing out since the voice acting has been perfectly fine up until now. But then again, maybe I'm the only one who thought it was. When the girls arrive, we find a small little monster that Bubbles, and specifically Bubbles, points out as being cute. Notable is the fact that Blossom vocally shows Lesson's interest, and Buttercup visually shows it through facial expression, indicating Bubbles to be into cute things, which defines Bubbles' personality more than in the initial moment. Bubbles can also apparently talk to the monster, 
So I guess that's one of her unique superpowers. Because the fact that she feels the need to relay the fact that his name is Frederick to the other girls probably indicates that the other girls don't have the ability to talk to Frederick like Bubbles does. Well, naturally, since Bubbles says that Frederick isn't dangerous, something dangerous happens that involves Frederick immediately afterwards. Namely, a Godzilla movie shows up right behind him. We get a little gag that expands on Buttercup's tough chick persona that was established earlier as the girls and Frederick run off. The fact that Blossom is the one to pull Buttercup away both focuses on the conflict between the two of them, remember, that's still a thing, and reflects Blossom's tendencies towards the leadership role. Blossom shares a fact about Bubbles' favorite sensitive thugs member, Chance, that Bubbles wasn't aware of. It's interesting to note that Blossom actually says something that's related to the situation currently going on, tying the two main plot threads together pretty well. Although it is a bit weird that Blossom's appealing to Bubbles with intelligence when Bubbles is the one who got the question right in the first place. Actually, now that I think about it, wouldn't Blossom be a better fit as the one who got the question right in the beginning? I mean, after all, she probably knows about every band member if, she, if her favorite is the manager, and it makes a more interesting dynamic of a leader having to choose between two subordinates. You do also have the two opposites going at each other, with, you know, Buttercup and Bubbles just being opposites in different ways. Then Buttercup and Blossom start arguing. Blossom says that Buttercup isn't even a fan of sensitive thugs. Wait, why does Buttercup even want to go? Because Dax? Don't worry about him, he's gonna go solo anyway. Bubbles becomes Blossom for a moment and tells them to stop arguing because they have responsibilities. And then we get a thing where they stop to have Bubbles force them to be friendly with one another. She tells them to say they're a buttzilla and only Buttercup does it, resulting in the other girls laughing at her. This gives Buttercup a reason to want revenge on Blossom, which will be a plot thread later. Why did we need another reason for Buttercup to want to go after Blossom? Also, worth noting is that this is a little bit, uh, mean-spirited on Bubbles' part, more so than I would expect from the character, but not so much that it's a detriment. They fall in a hole because, you know, they couldn't just stay above ground and follow the footprints that were there before this scene started. Whatever, it gives them an excuse to change scenery. As they follow Frederick, Buttercup says something at the exact same time as Blossom in order to jinx her, which is done with an earshot of Bubbles, who apparently doesn't notice and just thinks they're getting along as normal. Is Bubbles, like, mentally handicapped or deaf or something? Also, is texting against the Jinx rules? Because, you know, they have, they have smartphones. Just saying. A wild lava lady appeared! Lava Lady used Fire Blast, but it missed. Buttercup says the Blossom using her ice breath, which would instantly solve the situation, counts as talking, so she can't do it. So, Buttercup is literally making the situation harder than it needs to be for herself, mind you, because of... Buttzilla. Something that petty. Yep. Buttercup wants to handle the situation herself, presumably to use as leverage in Bubbles' decision regarding the Sensitive Thugs concert. Because remember, that's the core of this conflict. Why the hell did we need the Buttzilla thing anyway? Buttercup does handle the situation, but then the volcano is about to erupt, and Blossom's the only one who realizes it. Blossom tries to indicate what's going on through pantomime, and Bubbles thinks it's about sensitive thugs. So, I guess she's not mentally handicapped? Okay, that just leaves her being deaf then. Whatever, she says Blossom's name. They explain the Jinx was broken twice, once with a recurring sensitive thugs hologram thing, and another time with a graphic that was... That's supposed to be a joke? Like, a callback to the visual when Buttercup gave Blossom the jinx? I feel like one of these two explanations could have been cut from the episode and it would have been a detriment to the episode as a whole. Like, at all. Also, Bubbles' pause ends up being way too long because of this. And it really makes it sound like Bubbles really didn't have anything else to say after that. So it makes the dialogue really, really unnatural. At least with Blossom pausing before saying Volcano earlier, it was short enough time where it seemed like she was just trying to find the right word. Blossom and Buttercup start arguing again, Volcano's about to erupt, Bubbles is disappointed. Then Frederick gets kidnapped by a bird as Bubbles says that he seems like the only one she can count on. Blossom and Buttercup then demand that Bubbles pick one of them while fighting the bird. Even though that's probably a really stupid idea because she's really mad at both of them right now. I mean, at this point, I'd expect her to pick Frederick. Huh. Wonder if that's how this episode is gonna end. 
Buttercup decides to settle things with a rap battle after the bird explodes. Bubbles decides to save us from the ensuing torture that I'm pretty sure would have violated at least 15 international torture laws if it did happen. And reminds them that they're trying to find the mayor. Frederick runs away after a tentacle monster shows up. And I think we all know where this is going. Every monster on the island shows up. Okay, now we really know where this is going. Blossom and Buttercup apologize for the fighting, learning the power of friendship when the mayor shows up with a pickle to drive the monsters away. Like I said, we all knew where that was going. It turns out that all the monsters wanted was the mayor's pickle. I'll let you put in whatever joke you would prefer for that one. So now Bubbles has decided who to take to the concert, and it turns out it's Frederick! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's the first episode. I think this show does a decent enough job of introducing the girls while still uh, providing its own plot. I think the mayor gets introduced decently, but I think some newer viewers are going to be a little bit confused. I mean, they're going to get that because his name is the mayor, he's important. But I don't think they're going to understand the pickle thing at all, for one. Um, or, you know, the, the whole ditziness of him. You know, this... Episode seems a little bit too complex, too. Maybe one or two of those plot threads could have been cut and the episode would have been fine. Um, but it does make me want to see a little bit more, which is what I'm going to do next time. Um, hopefully I can get that out sooner than three weeks from now. Because this first episode was a bit of a bitch to edit and re-record stuff for. I... It's complicated. Bye.